Now, Jensen has returned to cloud nine. Fudge is going back to the top lane. Summit is going out of the team. And Sven is the support player. That's right, Sven has role swapped two support. That's a topic for another day entirely. Now, Cloud9 needed Jensen, let's be real. The state of mid right now in NA is so woeful, I don't think it's ever been worse. Think about it, you got Bjergsen, it's pathetic he was first team all pro. You guys, literally, I've now seen the depths you will go to to just claim the player you like is the best no matter what. It's actually pathetic. By the way, highest paid player in the LCS as far as I know. Fudge... He had no business being in mid lane for Cloud9. If he wants to play for FlyQuest or Dignitas or Evil Genius, that's fine. I get that. Okay, cool. That would be an interesting angle. You weren't going to be good enough to do something deep at MSI. I don't think by Worlds he would be a world-class player. I think he could facilitate some of the rest of the team. But as you saw, I've always thought this. Unfortunately, having your best players in terms of skill, be your top lane and your ADC, is really hard to make it work, boys. It really is. Like You just go and look for teams that won Worlds doing that. It's just very, very rare. Then, obviously, you have Jojo. Here's the thing. He's not actually much of a player. It's complete all wrong. It's non-existent, isn't it? He's got skills. And I can see how in EG, with the way they used him, he was considered a good mid laner. But, I mean, among the competition here, yeah, he has to be considered elite, but he's nowhere near the top. Eight. I think in EU, I'm not exaggerating. We can go five to six to seven mids deep in that region. I'm not talking about with the ones that import to NA um, before we have to go and like, pick up a guy like Jojo. In fact, go, let's be real. Let's go more. There's people in the RLs are better. There we go. Enough said. Even with like talent, by the way, the Sackens of the world. And about how Takui, I actually thought he proved himself. He, by the way, he probably could be an LEC. I thought he'd be a top player, but I thought overall, if you look at the team he played on, the games he played, Champions he played, I think maybe he was even the best mid over this split. So the idea Jensen could have competed, of course he could. I think he would have even been the best. I think whoever had him may well have won LCS this split. So to me, Jensen is the uncrowned king of the LCS because obviously he never won MVP. Even when, by the way, this is how mental that region is for narratives and TSM fans. They voted him first team all pro in season seven summer. You figure that out, how that makes any sense. You are the best mid laner in the LCS. All right, uh, who's the MVP? A different mid laner in the LCS. But I'm the best one, right? Yes, but not the most valuable. Um, I'm just going to change what valuable means. Because normally, like, the best thing would be the most valuable thing. Oh, fucking hell. Okay. Well, we get it. You love Bjergsen. Okay. We get it. You guys use his fucking taint as, like, the fucking scrubber for your fucking tongue to get it all lovely and hygienic. We get it. Okay. We very much get it. Hence why you ran and carried water for Reginald to be a piece of shit, potentially illegally, to his employees for 10 years. That's you, LCS. Broadcast talent. People in the league. Other pro players. And also, why else is Jensen the uncrowned king of the LCS? Because even though he won titles in Team Liquid, he hasn't won as many as Doublelift and... Um, and Bjergsen, and as a result, they don't really give him that status. They consider those the two goats, and they're the ones battling. For some reason, Jensen doesn't get it. He's not allowed to be in that triumvirate that they would be, which I think would be the most appropriate three players to represent the region. And I think it's crazy he's even available. What are these other managers doing? I would be throwing money at this guy. I, there's so many teams. I would have just gone out. I would, I would, I would make it so that, like... If you look at the, what the availability he has, I'd snap his hand off to come and join my team. So shame on those teams. I hope they get their fucking work from Cloud9 and Jensen this split. Jensen himself, right? What's sickening about this is, the rumour is, in the last off-season, first of all, two off-seasons ago, he could have gone to TSM and apparently would have. So he could have replaced Bjergsen and been coached by Bjergsen and they could have made some really cool narrative to that and potentially a new era of TSM being great. By the way, I think they would have won if TL didn't have it. Then also, you go over, not that they won, you don't understand. If you know, if you if you want to misunderstand what I say, if that's all you're here for, do it. Go for it. Get in the comments. Give me engagement, you fool. I'm going to ride you to millions. Okay. I think the sickest thing was this off-season, where the rumour is, Jensen was willing, I mean, if you look at his style, we even fit, to switch to ADC and then have Bjergsen come as mid lane into TL. But then the rumour goes that, like, then TL wanted Hans Sama, and then maybe Hans Sama wants to play with Bjergsen, and then Bjergsen, maybe he wants to play... Well, you know what? First of all, egg on your face, Steve. Maybe actually in, 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 inquire with some experts, or people who know these players. Don't just get the big names. And also, that could have been a sick Perks Caps move, where... Jensen gives up the mid lane, has Bjergsen come in there, then he plays ADC, and then we run the table together and stack titles. Man alive, 
Do people not know what box office is? So that even sounds like a great idea. Now, obviously, Jensen had his issues with ownership and corking and TL. Spoiler, he had it in Cloud9. So I think the interesting thing for me is this. He carried Team Liquid for the years he was in that team. Not as much early with Doublelift, all of the playoffs he did. Once Doublelift left, he was the main reason they were good and had a chance. So even then, right, one of their titles, Spring Season 9, Game 5, they don't win that without Jensen. Season 11 Worlds, this last one, for shame, Team Liquid. Steve Arhan said, you look at that performance. That's a miracle they even almost got out of that group. The things he had to do against world-class teams. And you just go, I'd rather have that old, dusty, old fucking Bjergsen that's been on the shelf for a year and wasn't better anywhere before. And it's done fuck all at Worlds. You know what? I hope you go to Worlds. And I hope when you get there, Bjergsen gives you one of those Worlds performances. He gives you a cheeky little 0-6, 1-5. You deserve it, mate. You deserve it with the way you treated this player because they did Jensen so fucking dirty. Like as much as he's in play, oh, what's to do with a coach? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's why you're not in the team anymore, mate. Sell me another one. Also, I know behind the scenes shit, mate. Come on, mate. Don't serve me fucking horse shit and tell me it's fine Swiss chocolate. I don't think so, mate. So I think the cool thing here is Blabber's had so much time to evolve. I think him and Blabber are going to get along really well. And that lane's going to be very, very dangerous. And the fact that they've got an accommodating top laner, I think Fudge can be the impact that Jensen wants on his team. The player who obviously now is in EU, I think he can play that role. I think Bot can already be strong anyway, thanks to Sven's work, I think, and already they've got obviously a really good ADC. I think he gambled by sitting out and not joining another team, but he got the team he wants, a contender. He got a team that can pay him. He got a team that the status do it. There's a reason to return. And you're not just also playing in the league. You can potentially go to Worlds, win titles, and he got the right time to return. That's the cool thing to me, because the significance of this story is where it's all at, in my opinion. This is the return of the prodigal son of Cloud9. This is the player who was the heir to High's legacy, who they selected to be the next generation. This was Jax Bjergsen. He looked over and saw my dynasty was toppled by Bjergsen coming and a top EU Danish mid laner and he came and he ran the league and he'd one of those he went out he gambled on incarnation a guy who, the rumour was like, like fucking DDoSing people he's toxic as fuck just seems by the way if you even saw the whole setup like there was nothing appealing about this guy it just seemed like a fucking weirdo but he managed to do the rehabilitation period thanks to Cloud9 and others they were doing it a little bit beforehand, to be fair. They got into the league, eventually changed his name of Jensen. But from there, there was years of success. They were in a really strong position. And he was one of the main reasons, one of the best players the whole time. But they never won a title together. They won titles again separately afterwards, but they never won one together. So if I'm them, I'd be thinking, how many could we have stacked if we'd have put the right team around each other and not gotten pissed off with each other in, in ways that might have been right at the time, but were wrong for the bigger picture. And also, I'll just say this right now. How many top hits did he make at Worlds with this team? And times where it's like, they weren't supposed to going in. And semi-finals with this team, beating a Korean team 3-0. Again, I hope these owners understand what a player like this does for them. Instead of just going, please, please pick me. Can I be the next one to pay Bjergsen millions to get nothing internationally? Thank you, please, please. He is the GOAT. He is. I'm starting to believe you guys do worship the GOAT, you fucking devil worshipper. That might be too far, whatever. It isn't actually. You know what? I'll pull it back. It ain't too far, you devil worshipper. Prove yourself holy. Fucking cleanse yourself of the sins and come forwards for confession, owners. Understand your fucking. The, the illness, the, 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 the original sin that has tainted your vision and beg for forgiveness. A thousand hour Jensen's go about your fucking day. Obviously, he had issues with coaching. By the way, he's an elite player and he's a bit of, he can be a little bit of a guy where he just doesn't like the way things are done. He doesn't appreciate people's attitude. You've got to get him to buy in. That's why Reaper at times was good and at times was a bit dodgy. By the way, take what he said about Jat on Double Lift Show with a grain of salt. A, he's in the cir circle of Double Lift there. I mean, my God. What a fucking human centipede of content that is. Fucking hell. That's like the top guys eating the shit. And it's coming. Fucking hell. Double Lift leaders just force feeding them shit. And also, it was, it was like watching a little kid where you know them and they're a cool guy. And then in front of people, they're just sort of like trying to be cool and like show you up. It's like, what are you doing, mate? 
Here's the thing, mate. Come at me straight if you want to talk about that topic. Come on the show if you want to. You tell me straight how it was. And when you do, I'll tell you the things I heard, and the things I heard from people you know, and the things I know about you, and the things I know about that environment. And you just tell me. You shut them all down, you know, and you see if you can get back. Because here's the thing, mate. They don't like you. They don't fuck with you. They only fuck with you on that topic because they get to seem like, oh, maybe it was hard done by her. Oh, sorry, nice a fucking asshole. Like, so you know what? You go for it. Sell everyone out if you want. Just do your part. They go, was it my fault we didn't win? Oh, fuck. I think I've hit something there, mate. I fuck with you. You know that. I'll tell you what, I don't fuck with that attitude. I'll never fuck with it in public if you go public with it. Every time you go public, I go public. If you want to do it again? Should we do it? Nah, I thought not. So just peel it on back. Become a good mid laner again. Then we'll talk. Right. Jungling was obviously a thing he had issues with in the past, but Blabber was so fresh then. Svenskeren was, quite frankly, had like beaten wife syndrome after fucking TSM. And they had Reaper as their coach. So I think with this new setup, I'm, I think it's going to be a great jungle maid. I think it's going to be the best jungle maid. I think it could be a very good Western jungle maid. I think it could do a lot. It could do... I, I predict when they go to Worlds, this will be another team that will be like on the border or they get out of groups on the last game. Or a tiebreaker. And he's made his point. He went away and he won two titles when Cloud9 thought he was done. When, again, they'll all tell you publicly, this is why well, it's not the way it's been a contract. No, no, I heard they didn't like some of his attitude and towards the end and they didn't like the way he took the court, the benching thing and they thought maybe he's a little bit surly and they thought they'd teach him a lesson by sending him out and then winning championships without him. Right, here's the problem, homie. He went and won two titles without you, <laughs> including key times when he was playing against your team. Then he went to the MSI final. You haven't done that yet, Cloud9. Beating IG. It's played at the last Worlds was good enough to be in the top eight. Again, what, what were you guys doing? And he's consistently been one of the best mid laners since he left Cloud9. He's got very impressive longevity, by the way. It's so impressive to me. So, Jensen, I've always said this, and I made a video about it. He can only win by winning. As in, he won't get his props unless he wins the title. He won't get his props unless he gets given the MVP by the top people and told, the idiot fans are told he's the best. He has to prove it directly in a way others can just do something and it can be inferred or people will accept it. So why not do it in Cloud9? It's the way you started out. It's the way you want to get that title to narratively close that chapter, as it were, make it a neat circle. And go there while Bjergsen's playing Again, for a top team, this time you're now previous team. Do him dirty while he's getting, he's like the highest paid player in the league, I've heard or something. While he's getting paid millions and he's just an average ish player, but slightly above average, maybe. So, on a more expensive roster than you, making the most money, I've always told, if you notice, the players that I fuck with privately, I tell them, don't shy away from your rival. Don't say, like, oh, it's unfair, he's got the better team. Yeah, and then when you beat him with the lesser team, think about what that fucking can say, what that shows to him, first and foremost, and then the others that know the game. I always tell them, battle your rival. Show him that you're going to take everything from this fucking guy. Show the world that when we play, I'm just better than him, whatever you think. And you can say what you like, because I give him the fucking work in the server. And you know what? That bullshit angle, like, oh, the Bergson, I don't consider it a rival. I don't think of you at all. I am John Hamm, in fact. Get... Nah, here's the thing, homie. First of all, you do think about these things. First of all, you talk about these things. First of all, these things do get to you. And these things are the reason why you go out your way to downplay it. You don't care so much, Bergson. You have to tell the world you don't care. And really make sure with your leather jacket and you look... <sighs> Anyway, babe, I gotta go. And what? Oh, totally not rebelling against anything there, right? That's just who naturally you are. Get the fuck out my face. You have to remember these guys are all emotionally like fucking 18 years old at this point in time still. Like, what do you want? So anyway, I think that's nonsense. By the way, the next split looks fire in the LCS, doesn't it? You've got Cloud9 now with Jensen back on a good-looking roster. Team Look has still got a good roster. They're going to have to see what the Bjergsen thing is, but they've got a team that should be an elite team. 100 Thieves obviously can get it together. I think the team's shown a little bit of wear and tear. Evil Geniuses, I can't see them win again, but hey... They, they did some amazing things before. Can they really challenge the monsters again? Maybe even like Golden Guardians, if they figure out leaders way better than fucking the players all, could just put him in and start carrying. And he could be sort of their Jizuki, as it were, when Freeze was on Renegade. It's like, I think this could be a banger split, boys. Hey guys, this is Perks, and you're watching Torning's YouTube channel. I would like you guys to appreciate his YouTube channel, even though he talks sometimes so much bull that not even I can handle it. But most of the time, it's pretty funny and entertaining. This video was kindly supported by Ahmed Haju, Matt Pignaccio Rakula, Kyle R, Pacey, Travis Goff, Adam Oaks, Animosity, Bot Pounder 420, Hades, Jensen Gore, Joseph Ginsburg, Kovacevic, Tobias Berlusconi, Tukan, Zumba, Xyrathenia, and a special thanks always goes out to Jerky's Minion. Would you like to find out who upcoming guests are going to be? Maybe even suggest them on the topic 
for my content. Maybe you want to appear in one of those lengthy eSports discussions with me or ask me a question for my video AMA. Well, if these perks or indeed any of the others available intrigue you, then join the Screw Illuminati today. Put the money where your mouth is. Where? In the description box below of the Patreon link.